Hi, and welcome to our next segment on Ion Pump Element Styles, again by Gamma Vacuum. We're going to do a little bit of a recap here, remembering that ion pumps are grounded cathode plates, and in between those we're going to have an anode ring, which is usually at about 7,000 volts, a high magnetic field going through that ring, which a bunch of free electrons are going to rotate around the axis of that magnetic field. Any oxygen or any molecules coming in, gas molecules here, oxygen for example, are going to be hit by those electrons and ionize, creating a positive ion. Those positive ions are in a, that positive environment and they're going to move very quickly towards that cathode plate where they're going to sputter, where they have a physical and a chemical reaction with the cathode material, ejecting free titanium onto the, those tubes and also the surrounding surfaces in the vacuum environment. Now, when we choose an ion pump element, we have to make a decision on speed, represented here by our race car, or we're going to look at long-term stability, and by that we mean noble gas stability, represented by our SUV. As vacuum scientists and engineers, we have to make the decision which of those two is more important given the space that we have and the system requirements. And of course, this video representing that the guys here at Gamma Vacuum can tell you exactly which element's going to be right based on your requirements. We start off and measure those with our basic pump speed curve, which we have speed on the left and system pressure on the right. <clears throat> that red line represents a CV or diode style element. The advantages to that one are it's going to give us the fastest speed for reactive gases. You can basically get the best vacuum and electrical stability out of that. The downfall here is that they're not long-term stable for noble gas pumping. So the DI, or noble diode, was created to address that problem. The advantage of that, obviously, is we do get long-term stability for noble gases. We still maintain our superior vacuum and electrical stability, and we retain about 80% of our CV pumping speed for reactive gases. Unfortunately, they do use a little bit higher price material. Another solution to the same problem is the triode element. And that triode, also have some branding there, um, also that one is going to give you stable gas, noble gas pumping, retaining about 80% of your pumping speed, and also give you the advantage of a higher starting pressure. Unfortunately, you do get reduced UHV pumping speeds, and some electrical stability issue, instability issues, I should say. And you also get a little bit higher price based on some manufacturing costs. Both that DI and triode are going to give you that uh, noble gas pumping speed curve down there, which retains about 20% of the DI or triode speed. In the real world, this is what those curves look like here. And again, reminder that the CV, which is going to be the highest pumping speed, here's the gist of how that works. You get your titanium cathode over there, which is going to be reactive with your reactive gases, oxygen. However, the problem lies in when you get noble gases coming into the system. Those are certainly uh, reactive with titanium. However, they're going to stay a noble gas and as you pump more and more and more of those they're going to embed themselves into that titanium and eventually you're going to get that one gas molecule that comes along and releases all of those molecules there's too much for it to hold kind of like wringing out a sponge and off they go the di on the other hand is going to be your best low pressure noble gas stability option. The only thing we do differently here is we, instead of using titanium, we'll use a tantalum cathode plate. So that same noble gas is going to come in and that same noble gas is going to re react with the tantalum. However, tantalum itself is heavy and dense. 
And instead of embedding inside that cathode material, that molecule is going to reflect as what's called a high energy neutral. And on that second pass, it still has enough energy to embed itself onto surfaces that are quiet areas of the pump, and eventually it'll be covered up by cathode material, sputtered cathode material. The triode has the best high pressure noble gas stability. The configuration of the triode is a little bit different in that the rings are actually grounded and we have negative voltage titanium strips as the cathode represented by the red squares. And on the opposite side of that we're going to have our vacuum wall. That same ion is going to be ionized, move towards that cathode plate, react both physically and chemically, and then move as a high energy neutral to that grounded chamber wall. And eventually over time will be covered up the same way with sputtered material. The disadvantage here is all those sharp edges, you're going to have titanium molecules that are going to build up on those edges, creating some whiskers. And that distance between grounded surfaces and high voltage is going to shrink over time, and eventually you're going to get some electrical instability. So I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call.